Beach fishing to feed your family, three simple steps. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you some really easy keys that will enable you to catch some fish for your family. It's not hard. I'm gonna show you everything, make it really clear, and you can do this and really enjoy it and catch some beautiful fish to eat. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Let's get started. I've come down this afternoon, I'm just going to quickly, I've got two rods, I'm just going to put a bit of bait on, chuck it out, and then I'll get started on the teaching. I have brought down several baits. I've got some beach worms, which I'm putting on now. I've got about a dozen pilchards, so that doesn't cost much really. And I caught a tailor that I'm going to fillet, so I can use some tailor fillet for bait as well on those two lines. So my first one I've got a double hook rig so I'm using two worm baits. I do that a lot but it's a very effective way to fish. I like using two hooks because if you get a bite and miss it you've still got bait and you, still ha you don't have to put your line in straight away because you know if you get a bite and miss it you can potentially if you've lost your bait there's no point in letting your line stay out there but if you've got more than one bait it's like okay I know I've got two baits, I missed the first one. I know there's fish there, I'm just gonna let, let it sit there a little bit longer and wait until I get a bite. So that's a really good thing about using a two hook rig or two different baits. On this particular rig, I have a, a worm bait that is coming from a three way swivel, which is about 70 centimeters up my line. That three-way swivel goes down to another swivel and my star sinker is actually free running between the two swivels. So it's kind of fixed but it, it does run between. Then uh, down underneath the star sinker I just have another length of line with another worm bait. So one of my worm baits actually sits on the bottom and one of them is suspended above the bottom. It's a fairly standard rig. I use it a lot but it's very effective. So I'm going to chuck this out, then I'm going to whack a fish bait on this rod. I'm going to fill it up that tailor and I'll show you how I do that and how I'm going to put that on. Now, I don't have to cast out very far. Really, the waves are breaking fairly close to shore and I'll explain why I've chosen this spot in a minute. I just want to get my bait just behind the breaking waves. I'm going to cast on a little bit of an angle because the wind is kind of blowing a little bit sideways here. So I want to cast slightly with the wind. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. I think that's a good spot. It's maybe about 10 feet behind where the waves actually break. I don't want to be too far out in the middle of nowhere. So I have a tailor here that I caught. Now you could eat that fish. It would be beautiful. But I'm going to use it for bait. They're actually really good bait. I used some the other night and uh, the, I caught a really good brim on it. But uh, all I'm going to do is just... I'm just going to cut it behind the head. Actually, I might scale it. They don't have very big scales, Taylor. They're quite fine scales. I'm just gonna scale that just so that it's a bit of a softer bait. I'm gonna mark it down here. Then I'm just gonna get the knife and run it just above the back backbone. I'm not applying too much pressure because I don't wanna actually cut through the bones. I don't wanna cut through the bones into the other side of the fish. So you can see there, I'll take that off, you can see the, the bone structure of the fish there. There's the backbone that goes down the middle and then all of these lateral bones that come down on an angle. So I've taken that fillet off, you can see there, that nice piece of fish. So I'm not using a big bait in this case, so I'm probably going to, I'm going to cut that across there like that, just trim that. I'll get three pieces of bait out of this. One, 
two, three. So you can see we've got three lovely little fillets. So out of um, this one fish, I get quite a lot of baits. I reckon out of a fillet, I've got three, maybe about eight or nine baits out of a fillet. So close to 20 baits out of that one fish. Now I'm gonna take, I'll put a couple of these in my bait bucket. I've got worms in here, but I'll throw this fish in here as well. And we'll take this piece down and, uh, and we'll put it on and chuck it out. So on my second line, I have a rig that I have actually made a video about this rig. And the video is called the world's deadliest rig. It's really a very effective rig. It has a main hook and a smaller stinger or keeper hook that is actually on a wire trace, which makes it uh, bite, bite proof for fish with sharp teeth. Since I put up that video, I've had, I don't know how many people, probably hundreds of people have made comments and sent me emails about the fish that they've caught using this rig. I have one guy who, the first time he used this rig, caught a lovely, lovely mulloway. First time he used it. So if you have a look here, you can see I've got this lovely piece of fillet. My main hook is embedded in the flesh. You can see the barb coming out. The little stinger hook is through it on the other side. And that, that's quite deadly. It catches a lot of fish, that little hook. But that, that bait, that's a beautiful little bait for a brim. Or really any fish that likes eating a bit of other fish's flesh. So I'm going to whack that, that out now. And then I'm going to explain to you my first easy tip for catching fish for your family. I'm just watching that rod. I haven't had a chance to um, chuck out my second line yet and I've undoubtedly got a fish. Oh, look at this. So this is on my worm bait that I just threw out. I could have more than one fish. I'm just going to take my time with this and walk down close to the edge. I always like to get close to the edge of the water. I don't really want to be dragging fish up the, up the beach. Now this is um, very quite a large, healthy salmon. Interestingly enough, my top hook, my line, my bait, the whole leader is gone. I had another bait up here, so I've undoubtedly hooked two fish while I've been talking. Although I'm happy to catch this guy, looks really, really healthy. Beautiful fish, so I'm going to put him up there. Then I'll uh, have to put another hook on this one and I'll get my other rod ready and then I can hopefully get started. <laughs> so I caught a fish first cast, which is always good. That fish alone would, um, would feed my family. So I'm rebaiting this um, double worm bait. I'm not going to chuck it out just yet. I've got my worm here. This is the tail part of the worm I'm threading onto the hook. 
I caught these worms yesterday, but they're still nice and alive. Oh, it's a bit skinny, this one, so... Just, well, I'm trying to keep the hook in the middle of the worm without, you know, piercing it out the side. So I've got a nice bit of worm there. Beautiful. So now I'm going to actually chuck my other line out, which has the piece of tailor on it. I just had the seagulls trying to nick my tailor. That beautiful fillet I cut up before they were running away with it. Now, the first simple step to catching a feed a fish for your family is, point number one, choose a protected spot. Whenever you go fishing, you want to enjoy the experience and for it to be a pleasant thing. So the conditions, the weather conditions, always dictate where you go fishing. So depending on which way the wind's blowing and the waves are coming, choose a place on a beach that is nice and protected. So you just want to get out of the wind and out of the waves into a place that's not all out of control and messy, which is exactly what I've done tonight. So that's key number one, is just choose a protected spot in the prevailing weather. Now I'm going to chuck out my other line. Might just bring my rod holder a bit closer to the water. The tide is coming in, although high tide tonight is not until 11 p.m. So it's got a little ways to come in. Low tide was about an hour and a half ago. I'm just going to lob this fish bait just behind the edge of the waves. Not a very big cast at all. Just beyond the waves where the waves are breaking. While this one's sitting out there, I'll, I'm going to toss my other one with the worms on and just hold on to that and let this one do its own thing. Now with that first easy step, let's move on to the second easy step. Once you've found your protected place to fish, with the wind behind you or a nice protected corner at the end of a beach, choose a place where you can easily cast your line into the deep blue water. In other words, you don't want to be casting your line into shallow water that's in, being mushed up by the waves. You want to find a spot where just a moderate cast will get your, way, get your bait behind the waves. I think I'm getting a bite actually. I'm not sure. Might have been a wave. No, I'm getting a bite. Getting a... Whoa! Okay. Well, that's good. That's on the um, bit of tailor. My, my main criteria, or pretty much my only criteria tonight, for choosing this spot was finding somewhere that was pleasant and protected. Okay, so this is a pretty solid sized fish. When you have a, a pretty decent fish on, you can't just pull them in straight away. You've got to um, tie them out. Might be able to get this up with the wave. Whoa! Not really. Man, he's going. I thought I might be able to sneak him in before. 
but not really. Man, maybe with the next wave. No, I don't think so. This guy's big. Whoa. Look at this guy. He's even bigger than the last one. So this was um, this was on that uh, piece of tailor. Look at that fish. What a magnificent fish. Look at that guy. That's a solid fish. So there's a good example for you. I had one fish bait, a piece of tailor. Caught a big salmon on that. And I caught a big salmon on my worm bait as well. Now I'm going to keep this guy because we've run out of salmon. We need some more. Alrighty. Now, as I was saying before, my pretty much, not my only criteria, my main criteria tonight was finding somewhere protected. And then the next thing is you want to get your bait in the position where the fish are going to be. So that was the, the second most important thing. Find a place where you can actually cast your bait behind the waves into the deep green water. You don't need to be a long way out. You just want to be just behind where the waves are breaking. So that's key number two. Okay, so I've had two casts with two different baits and got two fish, two really good sized fish. Now, I've made a number of videos and obviously I catch a lot of salmon, that's just the way it is. Um, it's a blessing really. But some, some people despise salmon, but they are amazing. I did a video on how to cook salmon, and I actually had a bunch of people around, and I wanted them to do an honest evaluation out of 10. And I actually just did the, sal the salmon in a simple beer batter. The lowest score I got out of 10 was an eight out of 10. Everyone was woofing the salmon. Then I have another video on Thai fish cakes, which is another way that we do the salmon. It's not the only way. And um, so I encourage you, check out those videos, the Thai fish cake video and also the other one. Um, and, you know, I think we need to improve the profile of the Australian, what we call the Australian salmon or the Kiwis called kawai. I'm pretty sure in New Zealand they don't complain. They probably really enjoy them over there. This rod that I'm using, I have 20 pound monofilament line on the reel. 20 pound line is a great all-round breaking strain for beach fishing. It's kind of a mid-range breaking strain. It's not light and it's not super heavy. Um, so it's, you can still land quite a large fish on 20 pound line. If you hooked a big mull away, you should have no problems with it. But um, I use this also for brim and whiting. I do, I like, I, I mix it up. I use lighter lines as well. But, this particular rod is a four piece rod. It's 12 feet long and it's four pieces so it actually pulls apart and fits in your car really easily. Which is great if you don't have a car which has got, I mean you can just stick it straight in the car, you don't have to have it in your, in your boot. Or, or you could put it in your boot. It just depends on what car you have. Okay, so I've got that piece of tailor out there. I expect to catch some other species as well. But uh, we'll see how we go. Okay. Yeah, that's where I want to be. My other simple tip is, tonight I actually have three baits. I have the tailor which I caught myself and some beach worms that I caught myself. And then I've got some pilchards, but the e third easy tip is come with at least two different baits. Because that way you can actually find if the fish prefer one bait over another, rather than coming down to the beach with just one type of bait 
which the fish may or may not be in the mood for, if you've got two different baits, you're actually just expanding your ability to catch fish and also expanding your ability to catch different species of fish. I don't really have the time in this video to go into a lot of detail about rigs. However, I have a video called Six Killer Rigs, which has had nearly half a million views. And in that video, I go through six of the basic beach fishing rigs that I use when I go beach fishing. So make sure that you check that video out. I might stick this one in the rod holder and just chuck that other one out again. If you have any questions about beach fishing or anything that I'm doing, please make sure that you put the questions in the comments and I'll do my best to help you. What I'd like to know, what is your main struggle with fishing? What's your number one thing that you struggle with? If you can put that in, that'd be great. I'm just going to check this bait. Um, I might need to put a bit more tailor on here. It's looking a little bit mangled, a little bit mangled up, so I think I might take it off. You always got to be careful when you're taking baits off hooks. You don't want to hook yourself. You've got to make sure that your fingers aren't near the barb, uh, so you don't get nailed with the barb. Now I have a small piece of tailor here. That's the flesh side. I turn it over. You can see it's covered in sand. There's the, there's the silvery side. What I'm going to do, because I'm putting a stinger hook up the top, I'm going to turn it down, I'm going to put my main hook through the flesh side about a third of the way down in the middle so that it comes out the other side. Then I'm going to turn it over, put it through the skin, poke the barb through so it comes through on the flesh side. Then I'm going to grab my little keeper hook, my little stinger hook here. I only need to put that in once. I don't need to actually do it the same way. All I need to do is just pin it at the end. Because that hook is really just holding that bait in place, but it is very effective as well at catching fish. So that's my lovely little uh, bait that I'm going to throw out. Now that would be perfect for a lot of fish. So we'll see, um, we'll see how, how that gets uh, hammered when it gets out there. Just looking at my other rod. Okay. You know, one of the great things about choosing a, a protected spot in the corner of a beach is you don't have to cast very far, you don't have to struggle. You can just flick your line out into the water. And really you can catch just about anything. The main thing is to have your line in the water. And then anything's possible. I'll just see if any of my worm bait has been taken. I haven't really been keeping a close eye on this one. On my website, rogersfishing.com, I have various fishing courses that I've created. I actually have a beach fishing masterclass, which has 15 videos along with notes. And that particular masterclass really gives you so much information about beach fishing just to get you really set up and being successful. So if that's something that you're interested in, just jump on over to my website. Well, these baits weren't touched this time. I'm just thinking, I could cast straight out in front of me, but I might, might cast. As I get away from this corner, the waves get bigger. If I head that way, it's a little bit more boisterous over there. So I might cast on an angle behind the back of the waves, just down there where there's a little bit more action. So I'm not going to cast straight out, I'm actually going to cast sort of sideways. Oops. And I still have that other piece of tailor out on the other line. So I'm just going to walk back where I can keep my eye on both the rods.
there's almost no moon, look. There's a tiny little slither of moon. I'm going to stand here and hold this one for a minute. That was swimming in really fast towards me then. I thought, I don't even know if I've still got the fish. It was just coming really fast. The other fish went left, this one's going right. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, it's fighting like a salmon, but it might not be. Could be a tailor, but I think it's either a big tailor or a salmon. So I'm expecting to maybe catch a tailor now just before dark. Come on, come with me. That's it. Just another big salmon. Hang on, yep. So this is another fish on that on on Taylor. So the Taylor fillet is really good bait. I had great success with it the other night on brim, and also Taylor eating Taylor. So, uh, and they're not difficult to catch. These are actually good bait as well, but I think Taylor is a premium bait. She caught on worms that you got free. You know, I caught some beach worms. I caught the Taylor on beach worm, and then I used the Taylor to catch other fish. So none of that bait really cost me anything. I also have a detailed beachworming course on my website which will get you catching beachworms and really it's an amazing life skill to have because once you know how to catch beachworms you have that ability for your, the rest of your fishing life and it will just reap massive rewards and you'll save so much money once you learn how to do it and catch your own beautiful fresh beachworms. I got a fish. I've just picked up my rod which had the um, I don't think I know, I thought I had a fish but I don't actually. <laughs> just thought I'd check my line that has the worms on it. It had gone a bit slack actually which is unusual. That usually means that a fish has bitten it and swum in towards you. Oh no, I do have a fish. <laughs> Well, goodness me, that has to be a world record flathead, that one. I thought I felt something, but not, didn't realise there was something that small. This is a little sand flathead. Beautiful. Have a look at the colour of his tail. He's got like stripes. So I've got to take this guy off without getting spiked. But thankfully, he's only just caught in the lip. All right, I have removed him. I'm just going to gently plop him back into the water. He liked a little bit of that beach worm. Here we go. Just going to let him go in the wave here. Off you go, mate. I just felt this one getting a bite. Yeah, I'm getting a couple of nibbles on the right hand rod. <laughs> Imagine if they both went at the same time. I could go, yeah! <laughs> I 
I can feel something whacking away on this one on my right hand side. It feels like a brim. That's what it feels like. Just waiting for him to take it and I'll strike. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, get in there. I hope I've managed to hook this fish. Yeah, I've got something. Mr. Fish. Oh. It's not a brim. <laughs> it's a wobby gong, or it's not a wobby gong, it's like a gummy shark. Let's have a look at him. I got stung by one of these the other day. Whoa! I got one of these the other day and he whacked his tail around. It was very abrasive and it actually drew blood. I think this one is a slightly different variety. I don't think it's exactly the same as the other one. Whoa. <laughs> well, on that, that note, I think I'll call it quits for the night. Had an awesome session. Been down here for an hour or so. Caught a heap of fish, really, and uh, certainly got a feed. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you really soon in the next video.